I wanted to share with you a few tips, uh, things that you should be doing over the next couple of weeks of August before September hits if you want to really, really uh, further your career. So in case you don't know me, my name is Dahlia and what I do is I help professionals to transition into roles that they enjoy a lot more than what they're doing right now, but also that pay more than what they're currently earning. So, you know, highly paid work that you also love. And so summer is actually a really amazing time to further your career because things tend to slow down a little bit. You may or may not take holidays. Even if you're not on holidays, you may find the office is a little bit slower. Um, you know, maybe that's not the case. Maybe things are crazier than ever. That can happen as well. But regardless, the major hiring sprees of the year do tend to happen in September, in the fall, between September, October, maybe the first uh, week or two of November, and then it dies down again before the end of the year. So if you are wanting to make any kind of a career upgrade transition, there's a really amazing window of opportunity in the fall. And the thing is, if you wait until the fall to start positioning yourself, you're going to already have missed the boat. It's already going to be too late. So that's where you really, really want to utilize these few weeks that are coming up so you can get yourself positioned before, before September. You know, you don't want to wait until the masses are already out there applying, etc. You want to always be ahead of the curve. Otherwise, it's, it's very difficult to compete. So um, so the first thing uh, I recommend doing over the next couple of weeks is to really get clear on, you know, the self-awareness phase. Where are you at in your life? Most of you have had lots of time to reflect over the course of the pandemic. If you have, if you've done your, you're working from home and you've had all this time alone and you've done your reflecting, etc. And you're still, you still haven't made a decision about whether you're going to make a change. Like, you know how... A lot of times in our minds, like we can replay the same question over and over and over and over again. Uh, should I leave this job or should I stay? And like a year later, you're still asking yourself the same question. So if you found that you've been asking the same question to yourself over and over again, whether, you know, whether it's do I stay in this relationship or do I leave? Do I stay in this job or do I leave? Uh, am I doing the right, you know, is this the right company for me or is it not? If you're asking these questions over and over again, or you know, you're asking yourself the question, ugh, am I ever gonna achieve my goal? I thought I'd be earning more money by now. Am I ever gonna, am I always gonna be staying at, at, this, uh, at this entry level position? Or am I always gonna be stuck at this salary level? Am I always gonna be stuck under that glass ceiling? If you're asking yourself these recurring questions, you need to start um, asking yourself a new question and most likely you need to start taking some decisions. You don't want to be wasting your time asking the same question over and over again, dealing with the same issue over and over again. You want to be moving on to the next issue and the next issue. Like I always say, it's an amazing thing with my clients when they start having the problem of having too many amazing job offers and they go, oh my God, what do I do? How do I respond to them? How do I choose the best one? And I go, okay, this is amazing. This is a great problem to have. I'm so happy that now we can deal with this problem of being too in demand versus the problem we were dealing with, you know, when you started the program, which was, uh, how do I get myself noticed? How do I, how do I get unstuck? How do I, you know, I've sent 200 applications. Nobody's answering me. Uh, what do I do, right? <laughs> now I'm much happier to deal with the problem of having too many, too many job opportunities. Like, uh, for example, one of my clients just reached out to me the other day with a new problem, which is that she is getting all of these. She said she's had five interviews for her ideal role. It's a managerial role, which she didn't when she started the program, like she didn't even think she could get one of those roles and she never thought she could transition into what she really wanted because she was just so stuck where she was. She really didn't think there was any way out except maybe to quit her job completely. So she was asking that question, do I quit? Do I stay? Do I quit in the stay or do I stay? Anyway, now she has these five interviews and now the question she's asking is, oh, I'm not sure if these jobs are going to allow me to work from home and that's something I really enjoy. So what do I do? You know, and that's just, I'm just so happy that she's asking that question. Like now we're into the negotiation. How can she work from home? How can she get that life on her terms? But she has all these opportunities available to her. So the point is, if you have been asking yourself recurring questions, you're dealing with the same issue over and over again, over, you know, more than a couple of month period, like you need to move on. So either you need to start taking a decision or asking yourself a different question. It could be you're asking the wrong question, like, do 
do I stay do I stay in a job that I hate or do I quit and have no money? You know, like that's a terrible question to be asking. Why don't you find a job you love and get paid well for it? It doesn't need to be either, you know, have a job you hate but be paid or no money and do what you want, right? So anyway, take a decision or start asking yourself a new question. Get really, really clear on, hey, what do I, what am I not happy with right now? Like be honest about it to yourself. You don't need to lie to yourself. Hey. This is the thing I'm not satisfied with. This is in the ideal world, what I would like. Okay, great. Then that's a starting point for you to start creating what it is that you want. The second thing is to really, really start positioning yourself. Uh, so whatever you decided in that phase one self-awareness, this is ideally what I would like. Now you wanna start positioning yourself to be competitive. And I see this all the time where people are really, really, um, positioning themselves to look like everyone else. They're still applying for jobs in the same way that their um, university guidance counselor told them to do. They're using those cliche buzzwords, dear so-and-so as a self-motivated, self-starter, uh, results-oriented professional. I would be honored to have the privilege to come and work for your beautiful company, you know? And it just sounds so cliche. It sounds like everyone else. You really, really need to figure out how to set yourself apart. And I just shared a little example of one of, one of my coolest clients that I've worked with who is applying to be an astronaut. And so he was actually entering a very, very, very competitive, I think tens of thousands of applicants to be an astronaut, you know? And, uh, and these are qualified people as well. And, uh, and he had to stand out from those tens of thousands. And so we had to put together an application where we're really figuring out what is the right wording um, for this so that the, they can, they can, he can kind of magnetize the attention of the people reading through these applications. Because if you sound like everyone else, it doesn't matter if you have the experience, it doesn't matter if you're checking all the boxes. If you sound like everyone else, you just, you don't stand out and you, you're not able to compete. So we did that and he's already passed the first round, the first application round, which is like super, super, super exciting. And we did a lot, a lot of work on the kind of language he was using and how he's communicating about what it is that he has to offer. He's extremely qualified, but so is everyone else. So, you know, he had to really, really stand out. So make sure that your branding is on point. Make sure that your sort of competitive advantage, your uniqueness in the marketplace, make sure you're, you're able to express that in the right way. And then the third thing is to make sure you have a strong network. I see this all the time where people, they either have a good network, but it's in the wrong area. Like it's not in the area they would ideally like to get into. So of course they just keep on ending up back where they were yesterday and not where they want to be tomorrow. Or they've just, they've never really focused on networking. They've just applied, you know, gotten gone into whatever job uh, they were successful at getting and that's it. So make sure you have really, really strong access to the hidden job market um, towards the jobs that you would actually want. And then if you have the, those three things really prepared and when they're really, really strong, then you can step into the September job market and you can, you'll, you'll be ready, you know, you'll even start attracting employers to you without you having to run out there and be job hunting because as they're getting, as they're coming back to the office, as they're getting more active going, oh yeah, we need to hire this person, we need to hire that person, we need to spend this budget before the end of the year, then they're actually going to start just spotting you and reaching out to you versus you having to do all the work of applying. But you know, that's what happens when you have those foundations in place and you've set yourself up, you've set up your, your branding, your profile, your positioning within the, within the hidden job market. And then that's where you can start getting those opportunities and you can come to me with the, the problem of having too many opportunities and you know, those kind of good problems to have. So I hope you're going to use the rest of your summer really, really successfully. Remember that also all of these things, like they should always be fun for you. It should never be, oh, you know, I'll deal with that branding and positioning and networking and career stuff after the summer. I just want to enjoy right now. Like you should be enjoying this process. It should be exciting for you. It should be some, and I, I think when it's not exciting is when either you're not doing it well, so it, in, in the right way. So it's still this very inauthentic thing where you're trying to sell yourself. That's obviously not something anyone wants to do. Or uh, what happens is people don't enjoy the process because they, um, yeah, either it's inauthentic to them or it's just, they're, they're not, 
they're not motivated by their whole career. You know, they don't know what they even want to do. They don't, they don't even know what would be that job that would light them up, that would make them want to get out of bed. So it feels like all of this effort is really just to get an improved paycheck, hopefully. But they're, they're still not excited about it. Ideally, they'd rather not work at all. Like they haven't found that thing that's really, really excited to them. And that also makes it something that you're not looking forward to. So those are also major issues because until you can be, you can find the thing that you're excited about in your career, for sure that impacts the kinds of opportunities that you're going to get. So anyway, I digress. Have an amazing couple of uh, next weeks of August and hope you're all getting ready for a... Um, yeah, some, some fabulous new career upgrades, whatever for you those are come September.